In the previous video, we talked about the different ways to organize a government based on the ideology of that society. Canada is a democracy. The people rule. Democracy requires that each person has a voice, that each voter is treated equally by only having one vote. A direct democracy literally has the majority rule. All citizens get to make the decisions. We saw this in the very first democracy in the Greek city of Athens, where citizens could discuss and make the decisions that would impact society. Each citizen would vote on whether a law should be passed, and in order to ensure these citizens made the right decisions, they would need to have some education and the ability to communicate ideas on various issues. But here's the thing. In ancient Athens, citizens were only wealthy men, so it was a relatively small group. Here in Canada, if we had every citizen participating in discussions and voting on every issue, we'd have chaos. Think about it. Could we even have a place where every adult in Airdrie could come together whenever a government decision needed to be discussed? And would every person in Airdrie even want to take the time to do this? That would mean that they'd have to take the time to be educated on the issue and then take the time to come to the meetings to discuss and vote on the proposed laws. We're all kind of busy. That's why we have what's known as representative democracy. We still like the ideas of democracy, but finding out the wishes of the majority can come by having somebody represent our views for us in government organizations. As a citizen of Canada, the main responsibility I have in being a part of a democracy is to vote. We vote for the person who will take the time to be informed and participate in government debates on our behalf. Representative democracy has some rules to make sure that those values of democracy are protected. I'm just going to briefly discuss them here because we're going to go into more detail in a lot of the videos coming up. First is elections. We vote for our representatives in elections. Previously our elections were periodic, which means they were held within five years. Now we have what's known as fixed date elections because they're held at the same time every four years, unless something comes up. These elections are held by secret ballot. This is important because in the past, People had to vote publicly, and that could lead to fraud. For example, somebody would bribe you to vote for them. Let's say they would buy you a beer. They can't do that anymore because they don't know who I voted for. I could take their beer and vote for somebody else that I wanted. When we vote, we're usually voting for a party that we'd like. This is because political parties help us to know who to vote for. These are groups of people with similar views or ideological beliefs. In Canada, we have five main political parties to vote for in federal elections. Next, representation by population makes sure that when there are debates in the legislature, each region has an equal voice because their representative is responsible for voicing the opinions of the same size group of people as the other representatives. Because Alberta is growing quickly, the population of our ridings have gotten bigger than other provinces, so they get reorganized to make sure that we have the same proportion of representatives in the House of Commons as other provinces. If you're a bit confused about this, don't worry about it, we're going to do a whole other lesson on it. In a dictatorship, the government can do, really, whatever they want. That can't happen in a democracy, because the government must be responsible to the people. If the government does break the rules, we can take the government to court, because a representative democracy has independent courts. The government can't tell the judges what to do. The press can also keep the government in line, so a representative democracy wants to ensure that the press is free to report on what the government is doing. In a dictatorship, the government usually controls all forms of media, so they can make sure that people only hear what will be good for the government. Lobby groups also work to influence the government. In a nutshell, they get together and try to convince the government to pass laws that the members of their group support. Lobby groups are one way we can influence the government and also make sure that the government is listening to the wishes of the people. One last way we can prevent our representatives from abusing their power is through the control of money. Many dictators will treat the taxes or other government revenue as their personal bank account, but most democracies have what's called power of the purse, which means that the government must get permission to spend money by introducing a budget every year that the legislature must vote on. The Prime Minister can't just spend money however he or she wants. And when the Prime Minister is voted out of office, that government money stays put, while a lot of dictators will take the money with them. Okay, so now that I've discussed the rules to make democracy work, let's look at Canada's democratic organization by looking at our levels of government. The Fathers of Confederation, those are the guys that created Canada, decided we needed to have a federal system of government because there were so many different communities and cultures. A federal system can deal with this diversity more effectively. Federal means to share power. In Canada, we have three levels of government. The local government, in cities it's known as the municipal government, the regional government, known as the provincial government, and the central government, known as the federal government. 
Yep, we gave the central level of government the same name as the system that requires them to share their power, just to make social studies a little more confusing for you. Each of these levels of government share power with different responsibilities. Our local government is responsible for things like water distribution and garbage control. There's also municipal bylaws that deal with things like pets or noise, issues that, while important to us, don't really impact all Canadians from coast to coast. The regional or provincial government is responsible for things like resource development and education. The Fathers of Confederation knew that this level would best be able to respond to the diversity of our country. For example, when Canada was created, there was a large French minority who mostly lived in Quebec and wanted to be educated in the Catholic schools. By letting each province deal with education, the other provinces didn't need to worry about what Quebec was doing. Each region also has different resources to be concerned with. For example, Albertans don't really understand the ins and outs of the scallop industry in Digby, Nova Scotia. So let that provincial government deal with it. And our central government is responsible for things that impact the entire country, like defense and foreign policy through things like international trade. The federal government is required to consider the needs of all Canadians when passing legislation. So in Canada's representative democracy, I have a chance to vote in three different elections. I am represented by aldermen locally, an MLA or a member of the Legislative Assembly provincially, and an MP or member of Parliament for the central government. Each of these representatives have the responsibility to listen to their constituents to find out what their constituents want. And trust me, my representatives hear from me when I think something's important. 